This is VOA News. I'm Marissa Melton. In Tuesday's impeachment hearings on Capitol Hill, former U.S. envoy to Ukraine Kurt Volker testified before the House Intelligence Committee. He said he should have realized U.S. President Donald Trump's motives in demanding that Ukraine investigate the natural gas company that employed the son of his political rival, Joe Biden. Tuesday morning also saw testimony from Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman and Jennifer Williams, who's an advisor to Vice President Pence. Vindman explained during his time on the stand why he didn't think his immigrant father should worry about his decision to speak out about the behavior of the U.S. president. He's heard here conversing with New York Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney. And why do you have confidence that you can do that and tell your dad not to worry? Congressman, because this is America. This is the country I've served and defended uh, that all of my brothers have served, and here, right matters. Thank you, sir. Yield back. President Trump on Tuesday called the proceedings a disgrace, but he also said the Republicans defending him were doing a great job. You have a kangaroo court headed by little shifty chef, where we don't have lawyers, we don't have witnesses, we don't have anything. And yet I just got to watch, and the Republicans are absolutely killing it. Authorities in Iran have blocked Internet service for a third day as part of a crackdown on nationwide anti-government protests in which at least eight people have been killed since the unrest began on Friday. The Internet outage has made it difficult for Iranians to share protest images and information with each other and the outside world. The demonstrations erupted in response to the government abruptly raising the subsidized price of gasoline by 50 percent early Friday. This is VOA News. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said he was moved by U.S. backing uh, for settlements on Israeli-occupied uh, land, which it announced on Monday. But Palestinians and Arab leaders are outraged. Reuters' Lucy Fielder reports. Monday's announcement by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo abandoned a position the United States has held for 40 years, that the settlements are inconsistent with international law. It moved Donald Trump's administration even closer to Netanyahu and further from the international position. Washington has already moved its embassy to Jerusalem, recognized Israel's annexation of the occupied Golan Heights, and cut international assistance to Palestinians. The settlements are built in the West Bank, which Israel seized in a 1967 war, and the Fourth Geneva Convention forbids an occupying power from settling part of its population in captured territory. About three million Palestinians live in the West Bank and want it as part of their future state. As writer's Lucy Fielder reporting. Fewer than 200 student protesters remain barricaded inside Hong Kong's Polytechnic University. Uh, the campus has been surrounded by riot police since Sunday. Over the past 24 hours, a slow trickle of pro-democracy demonstrators have left the campus either by attempting to flee or by surrendering to police. Those who are staying, however, are facing ever more dire circumstances. VOA's Bill Gallo is there. He reports from Hong Kong. The situation on campus is getting increasingly desperate. Uh, two students actually told VOA they are considering suicide. They were talked out of that, and it's not clear how serious they were about those efforts. But it's clear that this situation, as it enters its third day, is getting even more serious. Bill Gallo, VOA News, Hong Kong. President Trump's unscheduled weekend visit to the hospital raised suspicions about his health. Now we're hearing from his doctor. AP correspondent Rita Foley has more. The White House tweeted a memo from the president's doctor, Navy Commander Sean Connolly. He described Saturday's hospital visit as routine. The president didn't have any chest pain, he said, despite speculation. Nor was the president treated for any urgent issues, he said. The reason the trip was kept off the record? scheduling uncertainties. The White House said the president just wanted to get a head start on his annual physical. But Joe Lockhart, President Clinton's press secretary, tweeted his disbelief, saying he didn't go up there for half his physical. Rita Foley, Washington. Donors pledged $2.6 billion Tuesday to eradicate polio worldwide. The World Health Organization said the funding will be used to immunize 450 million children each year. I'm Marissa Melton. You're listening to BOA News.